Rufus T. Wall for once again in the mid-season and just literally a day away before I take to the skies and fly across our little piddly-ass channel back into Europe. Ha! You thought you could keep us out, but you can't. I will be winging my way all the way to Cologne, Germany to spend time with our good friends Echo for the race to world first. As Mythic Week gets underway, I shall be there, I'm joined by Nagura, Alex from Fat Boss TV, the OK Mage, and our new addition to the lineup, Mr. Medic, and of course, the always wonderful Mr. Jeeth. We will be back together. The Dream Team will be putting on a show to end all shows as the squad is unbanned tonight and heading into that Mythic raid. And having done... All of normal and half of heroic and our wonderful viewer pugs. We are in for some absolute nightmarish encounters. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be brutal. Uh, it's going to be hopefully as good as the last race. The biggest race ever watched was the last one. It's been a year since then. It feels like uh, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, but nearly 12 months. Nearly 12 months since the last raid. And we're going to be stepping in for the War Within's first encounter with, of course, Queen Anserek herself. And having read through the Dungeon Journal, it's going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing. Uh, so it should be an enjoyable thing. But that's not what I want to do today. Because today, of course, to finish out our day before I pack my bags and get all my stuff when I leave here tonight, it's drama time. And the next drama time, of course, will take place in Germany. Maybe at a different time, depending when I need to be on the couch. So I will uh, go to Twitter and let you know if drama time will change. And of course, we'll talk about it during the streams next week. And of course, on Monday, we are spinning the wheel of death as we finally head into Greek Crusader Kings 3 to unleash insufferable nightmares upon our brains, I think, is what's going to happen. We'll see. I've never played it before. We'll see. We'll see. We start that on Monday and raiding recommences on Wednesday. But... <clears throat> this is the title of our first story for our new viewers who may be new to drama time we've been in the show for over 10 years every friday at 4 p.m gmt that's london time y'alls around the world from as far as japan as far north as alaska and the antarctic we've had one story from the antarctic from all over the globe Everybody who has had an internet connection has played with other people. And other people can actually be a bit odd. A little bit odd. And sometimes in our wonderful MMO universe that we occupy, be it World of Warcraft, Destiny, Guild Wars, Final Fantasy XIV, wherever it may be, they, add a little, they act a little bit strange, especially because they're anonymous compared to their real-life bodies. And we celebrate that here based on my own horrific stories of the things I used to do back in the past. But of course, as you all well know, I'm now a wonderfully balanced, courteous, reasonable, flexible man. And uh, look back on my past self with a level of sadness. Uh, but I learned from those mistakes, as, as is clear and apparent. And... Um, Hopefully we can also not only be entertained by the stories of the weird and wonderful encounters we have in the online world, but also, you know, take in some life lessons. So if you have any stories to share with us, and I always say everybody has a story to share because you've all played online games, you can share it with us at PreachGaming.com. Drama at PreachGaming.com. Correction there. Drama at PreachGaming.com. And today's story, she came... Well, for our wonderful live audience, who I'm sure have their guilty hammers ready to go... Uh, we are going to need a guild name. Now, this is not a modern-day guild name where people gave up and just called themselves whatever. Uh, sweaty hogs or whatever. Uh, we need someone from the Cataclysm era. <clears throat> a guild name from the Cataclysm era. Uh, because they're still trying hard. They still believe in the code. Not quite Latin names. Mass Effect, that's good. Uh, the Sweaty Hogs. The Alliance Kings, like it. Uh, the Reckoning, that's the one. That is definitely a Cataclysm Guild. The Reckoning. Yeah, I like that. I like that. The Reckoning makes a lot of sense. All right. <laughs> Let us begin, my friends. As a reminder, we have no innocent emotes. Do note. Preacher! I wrote to you a long, long time ago for a story called Don't Be a Pussy. It was written between two of us. Uh, myself and my guild's holy priest about how our guild had to deal with an insufferable muppet of a blood decay for a week 
And I said I did have more tales about my newbie days and some other tasty drama that I've dealt with in the past. But today, I have my best story for you, I believe. The jury will be required. Okay. <clears throat> jury, you are actually required. Raise your hammers high. Raise your hammers. The jury is required. And of course, we have the most balanced and reasonable jury available on the internet. <sighs> I'll get into the details in a minute, but I feel if I need to explain something to you about the guild. I joined it about two years ago with limited raiding experience. Our guild, The Reckoning, had been around since I want to say Kata. It's run, I'm sad to say, by a husband and wife. Live audience. Our red flags are, of course, already firing here at the Husband-Wife Guild, but how could it be worse than that? How can it be worse than a Husband-Wife Guild? What roles do they play? Because it is way, way worse than just a Husband-Wife Guild. Way, way worse. Tank and Healer? Way worse than Tank and Healer. Way, way worse than Tank and Healer. <laughs> There it is. Grim Sky has clocked it. The wife is the main tank. Her husband is the off tank. <clears throat> Oof. <laughs> oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. No, thank you. I would leave immediately upon realizing that. I'm like, even if this guild is chill and everything's great, I am the fuck out of here big time. So I joined The Reckoning, and they're pretty fun. Has a lot of helpful people in it. And in this story, we've got to talk about a few of these characters and the chaos that has come to light in the past week. So this is recent. Okay. Disclaimer, in order to get the facts correct, this story is also being written by two people so we can corroborate each other's evidence. I like this. I like this. So, Mike... I joined them in early 2022, during 9.1. In my opinion, the worst expansion Shadowlands, but hey, I can't say much. I unfortunately didn't officially start my journey in Azeroth till WAD. I had no knowledge of how to play, no knowledge of my spec, which was Rep Paladin, so I asked around the Discord if anyone could show me how to play Rhett. One of the members pointed us to our main man, the hero of our story today, Lame One. Now, Lame One seemed like such a nice guy. He started going off like it was his absolute dream to talk about Rep Paladins in depth about when I should use cooldowns, when my, where my best stuff was, what talents I would need for both raiding, different talent setups for Mythic Plus, and he was even a bro and gave me gold so I could get my Shadowlands legendaries. All in all, everything seemed normal and fine in our guild, guys. I got to do my first raid in 9-2. I fell in every single hole possible in the Jailer. It was great. Now, I'll say this. The Reckoning, the guild, never really had any issues with fighting. Occasionally, as would happen, some jokes would go a little too far. And obviously, when someone went too far, they were wrong and they did sincerely apologize for it. As I stated, because I've written you another story, we encountered some drama in August of 2022. But that came and went as drama does, and Shadowlands ended and Dragonflight began and everything was normal. We cleared Vault of the Incarnates! And the next major patch came. I got myself a new job. And as life often does, my friends, I had to step away from the raid scene while I travelled a lot for work. Everything seemed normal from the outside. I'd pop in to see Big Old Meat Pie streaming on Twitch to see what was going on in Abaris, and it seemed well. Lame One and the rest of the crew were cutting up, cracking jokes, bit of bants for the raid. The entire time, one of our members, with the driest sense of humor, making everyone laugh when the guild would wipe or make a mistake. One day, though, out of the blue, I log in to see a message in the Discord from lame one now we have found the quote <clears throat> let me do lame one's voice where is he from san francisco <clears throat> uh, uh, hey guys 
I'm a stepping away from the guild and the game for a while. The guild just isn't what I once thought it was. And I, 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 I don't like where it's going. <clears throat> I was shocked, to say the least. I was concerned at first because Lane 1 did have some personal issues. No matter what time of year, no matter what weather conditions, he would wear sandals relentlessly in this bizarre Hawaiian shirt. And some of the guilds wanted to wish him well and make sure he was in a good place. So we did. And we messaged him saying this. And we once again found the quote. Hey man. If you're stepping away for a while, please. Take care of yourself. I'm gonna miss you. He responded back to us. Thank you! And that was that, I thought. Message sent. Our feelings expressed. I'll go on with my day at work. Apparently, <clears throat> Preacher and the wonderful jury listening today, it wasn't in fact nothing. It was in fact the opposite of nothing. It was something. I got home one day, checked in to see that our off tank, big old meat pie, the husband of the guild leader, was in voice chat. I hadn't talked to big old meat pie in quite some time, and I was curious as to why lane one left, of course. So I thought I'd pop in, say hi, as I'm now an old school member of the guild. What's up with our boy lane one? Now, <clears throat> preacher, I would like to take a minute in fact, both of us working on this story would. To let this breathe and quote one of our favorite World of Warcraft characters because, motherfucker, I was not prepared for what I had just unleashed. Big Old Meat Pie had been talking about what was really going on and it was bad. Over the course of the years that Lame One had been playing with the guild... He had been getting real close with the Big Old Meat Pie. They played almost every game together. If Big Old Meat Pie had a game that he had, they were practically inseparable. So much so that the sandal-wearing lame one had visited Big Old Meat Pie in the real world and even met his wife and child. So it was an absolute shock when I heard what Big Old Meat Pie had to say. Over the time that Lame One had played with us, he had, of course, and I do want to point out, Bex has put these names in for me. <clears throat> he had developed feelings for big old Meat Pie's wife, Snotty Ham, who was also, as you remember, the main tank and the guild master. But that wasn't the worst of it. Nope. Big old meat pie began to share the details of what had happened here. So let me start with the things that I didn't know coming into this conversation. A.K.A. A lot. I title this mic Chapter 1, The IRL Visit. Things had apparently got wrong after Lame One had come to visit and had dinner with Snotty Ham and Big Old Meat Pie. They had played D&D that night, which they usually played with Lame One, so they all decided to hold the session at the couple's home, along with their other online friends who were usually part of the D&D group. Lame One sat with Big Old Meat Pie, and would sometimes come around, sometimes come around and pop into Snotty Ham's camera now and again to be funny. <laughs> that guy. The mood was light. Feather light! It was a fun D&D &D session after all. It ended, of course, sooner than usual. Due to distractions from the excited small child running around and Lame One not having his own camera to be on. He said he couldn't be fully immersed in the story. <clears throat> so they called it a night and Lame One was packing up to go back to his hotel room. Before he left, Snotty Ham and Big Old Meat Pie told Lame One that he should stop by the next morning, since his checkout time was early, and chill at their house 
before he had to drive home. Since the times would work out better for him. Big old meat pie said, I won't be home for a bit in the morning, but you and Snotty Ham can hang out until I return. Then we can all have dinner and say our final goodbyes. Snotty Ham added, Yeah, that way you can hang out until it's time to go. The next morning, Snotty Ham and Big Old Meat Pie dropped their child off at school. And Big Old Meat Pie went off to earn the big bucks, the dollary dues. Lame one, fresh Hawaiian shirt, clean sandals, rolls on over. He and Snotty Ham sit on the couch. Snotty Ham on one end, lame one at the other end, wiggling them toes. She offered him some water and they chatted about a lot of things. The guild, D&D, work, life in general, just shooting the breeze. Now, interviewing Snotty Ham after all this happened, she highlighted something worth mentioning about their conversation. This is where the jury comes in. Okay, <clears throat> I think we might have to render judgment on the obvious affair that's about to break out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's pay attention to the evidence. At one point, Lame One says to Snotty Ham, Oh, interesting that you guys keep your camera pointed to you during the day. Like, that doesn't creep you out? As he pointed to the webcam on Big Old Meat Pie's computer facing them on the couch. That was not where I thought this was going. Okay. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, it's a cookening, isn't it? It's a cookening. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a cookening. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. We've got a cookening. It's a cookening. The uh, the husband's watching. Yeah, it's a cookening. We've got a cookening. <clears throat> oh. oh, it's bad. Oh, he's got to be watching and jerking it. Well, you rail his wife. That's disgusting. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> oh. World of Warcraft, motherfucker. <laughs> and you're moaning me about you're moaning at me about winning loot. Like, get real, dude. <laughs> Let's continue with the evidence. She admitted that the statement put her on edge about lame one we could be wrong who realistically was still a stranger in her home and kept her phone next to her just in case huh did anybody get that from someone saying it's weird you have a camera pointed at you all day There was like a security feature in case Lane One. I mean, I guess that makes sense. In case Lane One becomes a creep, they have a camera watching. If they've got it in its. Okay. Suppose that, like, okay, I'm going to be here alone with him all day. We still don't really know this guy. Okay, well, I'll put the camera on so I can check everything's okay. That kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. I can see where they're coming from with that. Either way. When I was speaking to her, she tells me that she's a very careful person and felt in, in control of the situation. She wasn't fearful, but his question weirded her out. Okay. The next two hours passed without incident. She and Lame One went to pick up her child from school and shortly... Nobody's... Okay. Yeah, the cooking was not happening. And shortly after Big Old Meat Pie came home. All of them hung out for a bit more. They said their goodbyes and lame one left. Hmm. All right. Days later. Shit got real. Mike, we have obtained the text me- Oh, shit. <laughs> do we actually have the text messages? Oh, we fucking do. No way. Oh my god, we have the messages. Oh, that is crackers. It even has the date on it. 
Oh, we're getting this is oh we're getting real here. <laughs> oh shit. We have the text messages. Yeah, Bex is really happy now. Okay, we have receipts, motherfucker. All right. <clears throat> Late a few days later is when it got real. Below we have included and found the text messages exchanged between Snotty Ham and Lame One. In a text message, Snotty Ham brought up how Big Old Meat Pie didn't help prepare a picnic for them and their child one day. The text messages are provided below. Okay. It was a picnic orientation. Picnic orientation? Whatever. So, of course, I got up early and prepared the picnic. Got our kid ready and willing to go and all that. Big old meat pie gets up and just shows up. Yeah, that's pretty lame. Makes me want to be helpful to you just seeing that lol. Oh, if big old meat pie only knew what he had. <clears throat> oh, lame one, lame one, lame one. Yeah. Yeah, but okay, I have a question. Let's let's gauge the chat's moral compass here. Obviously, lame one is flirting. She does not shut it down. IMO, both guilty. Just saying. If IMO, both guilty. If someone's texting that to me or to Emma, my reply is, do not talk to me like that. That's not happening. Uh, less guilty, still guilty. It's definitely levels, but both are guilty. But all right. <laughs> you can flirt. Ah, disagree. I think if you're in a text message that your gut instinct is telling you if my partner was to see this, I am absolutely in trouble, then you've, you've overstepped a line. <clears throat> you've overstepped a line. Haha, <laughs> all good, you know that I'm strong like that. Yeah, you're doing amazing. Does this mean I can work on making you happy? I'd sure like to. <sighs> Still doesn't shut it down. Haha, ha, no, I'm happy. Don't worry about me at all. My kid laughing makes me happy. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> what do you think? I, I would I would fucking challenge anybody watching right now after the flirty ass lines that Lane One has sent her. She says, No, I'm happy, don't worry about me. What is the actual next question that he sends her? <clears throat> There is no fucking way you'd guess it. There is no fucking way you'd guess it. No, literally. So he says, I'd sure like to make you happy. I want to work on you, right? You're miles off. You've got to remember there's something you're forgetting, right? It's the nerdiness. She says, no, don't worry about me. He responds within one minute, 30 seconds. Okay, shall we do keys then? He went from trying to have an affair to Mythic Plus in under three minutes. In under, that's incredible. That is an incredible pivot. I've got to respect that pivot. <clears throat> it's an incredible pivot. He like sent it out. He, he shot his shot. He missed the target. Let's do some keys. <laughs> Not the pity gaming, lol. For real though, I'm happy just chilling with my kid. Now, I'm sure you would agree that the message, does this mean I can work on making you happy, was a completely out of pocket. I'm not sure what that means, but I assume it means out of line, and I agree. Snotty Ham being a person who loves to give people the benefit of the doubt. <sighs> Ooh. You're suggesting she's innocent. Hmm. Disagree. Convinced herself that he meant liked to make her happy as in like playing WoW together, etc. Mike, I understand 
what you're thinking. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> she decided to leave the whole conversation alone and did not mention it to big old meat pie so that, you know, he wouldn't commit manslaughter. That's why you tell. Trust me, me and Emma have both received messages like this. The first thing we do is look at what this dickhead just sent me. <laughs> That's how you build just like, look at this fucking dickhead here. Look at this. <clears throat> it was only a few days later that lame one messaged Snotty Ham and asked her to join Discord. Can I talk to you, he asked. Um, well, I'm getting ready to work at the minute, but we could talk later tonight if you were around, she responded. Lame one then followed it up with, oh my god. I don't know the words in here, but we are about to read a paragraph, Andy. I know it's cringe. It look I, I've, I've not read any of it yet, but it looks like a guild leaving post from 2006. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's, it's full on. <clears throat> it's full on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's full on. This is like complete fucking loser vomit. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm not doing the voice. Lane one could be saved. I think this is going to be cringe enough. I'll just make it here because at this point, I've got the feeling I'm going to lose everything anyway. <sighs> this is opening line. Oh, God. <sighs> That's line number one. <laughs> I wanted to mostly apologize for asking you if I could make you happy. Ever since that moment, it has become one of my snowballing thoughts. I don't appreciate that I took advantage of you confiding in me with your struggles with big old meat pie. I'm disgusted with myself that in that moment of your vulnerability, I chose to try hitting on you versus caring about your wants, needs, and friendship. A friendship that I share with both of you. I've wanted to apologize to you because I, in my mind molested the friendship that's a bad phrase never type that just give that a miss like if that's in your head let's let's don't use the word molestation in any context just leave that alone <laughs> it literally says molested here vex can back me up this is a screenshot by the way it's not typed i do not ha oh here it comes right here's the butt i do not however really want to say anything to big old meat pie I would like to make a living amends to Big Old Meat Pie by just being a better person and a better friend to him. I personally felt that verbally apologizing to Big Old Meat Pie would only hurt you and your family and do more harm than good. Of course it would, right? Everybody knows this. <laughs> Well, nothing's really going on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject myself into your marriage and just start saying some shit. Because it make me feel better. <laughs> it would make me feel better if I was just to inject some bullshit into your lives. Is that okay? Now, you might say I'm being selfish, but honestly, I think it's for the best. <laughs> now, <clears throat> something that I am unsure of, though. But I have a strong feeling is that you decided to share what I said with some people. <gasps> oh, busted. She told people. Busted. It is absolutely getting back to the husband. To me, it seems that maybe the other guildies, they're named here, but I can't include it. To two other guildies. The reason I say that is because things I have said to you are things I'm hearing you say to them and then laugh. Oh, he's being belittled. The other problem is that I'm aware that you put on the kindness even for people you don't like. I'm hoping you'll just be honest with me right now because I'd rather leave the guild and move on with my life 
then continue to feel like you and others are making fun of me behind my back. This fucking guy. This fucking guy, man. <clears throat> I fi I kind of side with her now that she was like, I just thought I was being nice. And now I'm getting this. <laughs> I was just being nice. <laughs> it's literally, really, he's the victim. <laughs> oh my god. This is the victim of loneliness. That's what this is. This is the victim of loneliness and stewing on something minor for 70 hours and coming up with some fucking cannonball. The scary part of me telling you all this was that for the first time in my life, I exposed myself to someone else. Yes, I did mean that I would love to play and talk more as friends. But there was also bad intentions in there on my part. Sexually. <laughs> Sexually. <laughs> to be clear. In case you didn't get the message. <laughs> Just to be sure. And that isn't okay. That is the part that has been making me feel off in my real life and upset. You are very beautiful. <laughs> and an amazing person. Of that, there is no doubt. <laughs> you... <laughs> Bex, I can't believe I have to read this. You filled my heart with desire. <laughs> For someone like that in my life to be greater than what your friendship means. And I feel awful for it. <clears throat> now, <laughs> in talking to Snotty Ham, the way she recounts this situation, she says this, this was the point that she realized that he did in fact mean sexually and not mythic plus <laughs> Could be. i've thought of a new game we're gonna play on stream we're gonna play is it sex or is it mythic plus and you're gonna i'm gonna have two people who are gonna say a sentence and then we'll have two game show contestants who have to decide whether this statement is referencing sex or mythic plus right that's what we're going to do. We're going to have somebody come out. We're gonna, they're going to make a statement. And the con the contestants have to decide, are they talking about Mythic Plus or sex? <laughs> Which one is it? <clears throat> now, I should tell you that he had a meltdown during the raid a few nights before this. To which the off-tank rallied a bunch of officers to support him in his mental struggles that he was having. Snotty Ham decided to respond with kindness and care and whispered lame one to forget the apology and just move on. Oh my god, we've got Discord logs. Oh my god. Two days after that raid. Lame one messaged Snotty Ham on Discord. Asking her to delete her phone number from their Discord messages. Where she had given him, given him her phone number because he was visiting in real life. She was confused and asked why. To which he admitted that he was still having growing attachment issues to her. Okay. I've got a... Delete for me, please. Why? No one could see that my phone number on here. Nobody can see it, but I'll be honest with you in saying that I love talking to you. The flip side of that is that an attachment is growing towards you. And if we talk about our personal lives, it just grows deeper. Okay, then. No worries. <laughs> okay, then. No worries. All right. <laughs> okay.
okay then. No worries. I just wanted to keep your company because uh, you weren't feeling great. Not like we need to chat every day. <clears throat> no attachments allowed, goat fucker. I've got her respect. She tried to lighten the mood by calling him a goat fucker. I like that. Yeah, I read it. No, I'm fine with that. She tried to... She's doing him a favor by changing the subject and making it goofy. She's really trying to throw him a Hail Mary here. That's like... That's like a, a guy chat. It's like, let's just spin this another way and send it in a different situation. Oh, he can't... He, he didn't catch the ball. He's fumbled, guys. She threw him the ball. She threw him the ball and he did not catch it. Having your number is too much temptation for me to reach out. It's just too much. I think the attachment won't be as strong via Discord or in game. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> At this point, <clears throat> she realized, or in her description of what was going on, that he was trying to deal with his crush on her in a mature way. I wouldn't say mature is the right word. And stated that he needed them not to talk to, to, so much anymore. And she complied. So she decided, oh... That this is the time to share what was going on with Big Old Meat Pie. Because she felt he would notice why he hadn't been around so much anymore. Yeah, lame one's missing. Snotty Ham confided in her husband about lame one's crush and asked him to be quiet about the whole thing since it was causing him mental issues and they were still good friends and not to make a big deal. Big Old Meat Pie said they remained quiet about their friend lame one having the secret crush okay you might think that's the end it is not the end preacher 30 days later a whole month would go by with the entire guild and everyone in it feeling happy comfortable the clock turning and everyone moving along happily during that time Snotty Ham and Big Old Meat Pie felt like their friend that they had invited into their house, Lame One, had moved on. Especially because he now started talking about his new girlfriend. Sure. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> And the Azeroth was once again at peace, at least for the reckoning. <laughs> She's called Crisanda. She's Canadian. You wouldn't know her. She's real to me. How did you meet her? Well, I watch her every day on Twitch. <laughs> we talk all the time. <laughs> so, during the last TBC Time Walking event, our guild was doing the Black Temple for fun since we had Heroic Avarice on farm and we don't roll a Mythic. That same day, we had brought a new mage into our guild. Now, there are some people that Lame One didn't like. One of those people was our Demon Hunter because he was jealous of how much time he was now spending with Snotty Ham. Over it, by the way. New girlfriend. <laughs> definitely over it uh definitely over it got his new girlfriend <laughs> during the raid the new mage we recruited that day in his very first raid was kicked for using a very offensive slur towards our other guildies so he didn't vibe with us and we kicked him fair now at this moment lame one hatched a plan to get the demon hunter kicked from the guild over it by the way he went to our holy priest, the only officer who wasn't at the raid at the time, and told him that the demon hunter had said these slurs to other guildies. Now, Preach and the Mighty Jury, it should be clear that he knew 
And all our guild knew that our holy priest does not take this type of behavior as a joke in any way, shape, or form. Immediately, they confronted the demon hunter about it. And of course, when confronted with a less than happy officer, he said, The fuck? No, I didn't say any of those things. If you want proof, just ask someone. There's a stream of the raid. Very quickly, the Demon Hunter produced a clip of the raid when it actually happened and provided evidence. Upon seeing this, the Holy Priest, of course, then went back to Lame One. Lame One responded with Shrews Japan. It sounded like the DH, I don't know, question mark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, the next raid, an emergency meeting was called by Lame One and Big Old Meat Pie with all the officers because Lame One was crying during the raid because he kept claiming that everybody in the guild hated him. Uh, literally crying. The whole guild spent the next 30 minutes of raid time assuring him that none of us hated him and we loved having him there. The next day after the raid, the officer chat was on fire with Big Old Meat Pie telling the officers that before we make any decisions about kicking someone to bring it to the guild masters before, it's a before making that choice unless it's a very explosive situation. Officer Laywon then said, I really miss the days when we just kicked problematic people with no chances or explanation required. This set our officer chat on fire. I had seen the officer chats, but I don't have them because some of our other officers were not comfortable with their messages being shared on drama time. I keep it anonymous. What the fuck? It ended with lane one basically calling our guild... A changed environment filled with toxicity. And because we weren't being stringent enough that now we were tolerating homophobic and racist behavior on the daily. <laughs> to be absolutely clear, no, that was not happening. <laughs> but Mike, that wasn't the worst of it. The final incident happened after Lame One had called Snotty Ham... The girl he'd been crushing over, the wife, a racist. Big old meat pie obviously came to his wife's defense, saying that if I ever see you talk to my wife that way, then our friendship and your presence here is over. Lame one had a rebuttal. He said to big old meat pie that she wasn't behaving that way when she was sucking me off. That she had invited him over that day while he was at work to sleep with him. And that the only reason he didn't do it was because Lame One was such a bro. His final comments were all caps. She came on to me. <laughs> See, I'm a homie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a good guy, actually. I'm such a good guy. This caused big old meat pie not to scream in anger, not to get mad, but begin wetting himself with laughter. Lame one, I've known about your little kitty crush on my wife for literal months. She told me everything. We don't hide shit from another. You do realize that she only speaks to you out of pity because you fucking suck, right? Lane One went quiet for a second and then said, She said you guys were going to break up. And Big Old Meat Pie replied, She really doesn't like you, mate. <laughs> Aww. And I tell you, Preach, I couldn't believe it at first. Lane One always seemed like a true, real bro. I didn't want to believe it in all fairness, but after seeing the screenshots and the proof with mine own eyes, as you now have, it didn't leave any doubt in my mind that our friend Lame One had some real demons to live with and he had burned the bridges with everyone. 
The day he and all his alts were removed from the guild and he was banned permanently from our Discord was a happy day. I'm sad to say, like a fart in a jacuzzi, no one mentions Lame One anymore. His name isn't uttered. But now something is different within the reckoning. Every single time that Snotty Ham talks to anyone in the guild, she always adds, BTW, I am not coming on to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to do keys? By the way, I'm not coming on to you. Just say, <laughs> by the way, I'm not coming on to you. Okay. All right. I'm logging off for tonight. That's not, I'm not coming on to you. Just saying, just saying. <clears throat> All is right in Azeroth for us here at The Reckoning, but I have more dramas uh, that I will send you in the future with meme wars and everything else. I hope you all have a lovely time and a great weekend. I will. I will. I can't believe we got the screenshots and messages. That's a classic. That is an absolute classic. Uh, <clears throat> let's do... This one looks very short to finish us out. Uh, purely because I have to pack before I leave. Because we're going to Germany. We're going to Germany for sausage. What do I do? This looks like someone in need of our help, audience. And of course, our wonderful uh, YouTube watchers who can catch it and leave the comments there. We need a guild name. We need a guild name. Uh, no context for this guild name. We just need a guild name. So send it, friends. Send it. Uh, okay, we'll go with the dishwashers. Sure, sure, sure. Get your memes out of here. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Dishwasher. Ha ha ha. <clears throat> Good evening, Mike, and hello to your wonderful live audience, YouTube and Spotify and others currently listening on whatever random platform that Drama Time exists on. That would be Apple Music and Google Music and all that kind of stuff. I write to you from the land of Bulgaria. I've been to Bulgaria year or so ago. It was nice. And I've got to ask you one simple question, my friends. What do I do? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury of drama time, I find myself in a bit of a dilemma with my current guild existing in Cataclysm Classic. Before I get ahead of myself, let me give you some context as to how we got into the situation we are in. Okay. Back in 2021, I was a private server poor with a friend group of mine, and well, let's say I was the shittiest human being. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> I was the shittiest human being in those 10 man raids that we were doing. A lot of people would find it unsettling or not fun to always be the bottom feeder, but I enjoyed the fact that I had phenomenally high standards set on me as most of the people who were playing were seasoned raiders while I had just begun my raiding journey. Oh, you mean shitty as in a terrible player. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I thought you were just a bad human, but no, you're just crap at the game. Okay, I see. <laughs> I see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I, th I thought this was just a bad person. Just somebody who's shit. Learning my pr rotation, proper CD usage, not standing in the fire and all that was pretty hard at first. And I'm not going to lie, Mists of Pandaria as a first expansion is not a place to start for a beginning raider. April 2022 rolls around and we see it get announced. Wrath of the Lich King Classic. My good friend Wazin, who I've been friends with for about 10 years, started in Wrath. So did a bunch of others, so they all wanted to jump in. What was I to do? Well, join in with my bros, of course. I can't just sit there and watch my friends have fun raiding. Wazin and another one of my friends joined the guild, the Dishwashers during the Wrath pre-patch as both of them had leveled characters while I am, essentially, a new but still Wrath baby. No gold, no characters, no gear, and worst of all, no logs. Now, of course, this wouldn't stop me from making a character, but I ran into one issue. I've been leveling on a private Mists of Pandaria server with times 10 experience. <laughs> and joining the Wrath pre-patch where not only was I not aware of the rest of the world, but the combat was slow, to say the least. I fucking hated the gameplay. But then I saw it. 
Blizzard let us make a fresh Death Knight despite not having a level 55 character. Free win for me. Now, of course, I've never played a Death Knight in my life until that point, so I figured better to start as a fresh player and get familiar with the class as it evolves throughout the expansions. Wisdom was on my side. Wazin called me a masochist. Playing a Death Knight with no rune regen feels like you're playing the game on 0.5 speed. I didn't agree with him back then, but now in Kata, I do. Fuck that. You get really good around Firelands, dude. Stick with it. Trust. I was a Kata DK. You get balling. Balling around Firelands. Absolutely balling. I somehow managed to get myself into the dishwashers. All on my own. They gave me a shot. And it seemed I performed well enough to pass their trial. T7 was a snooze fest, but that was good for me as it gave me plenty of time to learn my class and its resources. T8 was good, but the fact we had to farm Vezax for 44 weeks, even in TOGC, killed my soul. And for those of you that didn't play Wrath Classic, we got to a point where the DPS was so optimized that in order to do Vezax hard mode, we had to sit there and wait for two and a half minutes. Is that true? He did say 44 weeks, but maybe he's mistyped, fat fingered, who knows. Of course, classes like Paladin, Warrior, and Feral could go make some tea and have a piss, but the DKs, Rogues, Enhancements had to constantly be rotating fucking kicks. If I remember right, <clears throat> it's been a long time since we did this. Uh, fuck me, it was when I was in Method. You just had to wait for all the green things to coalesce into an a monster. The green ball things, was that it? You just had to fucking wait for that to happen and they were on a timer. Was that what it was? <clears throat> yeah, and there's no way to speed it up. Yeah, 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 they were just on a timer. Ugh. I fucking hate Vezax. It tainted my perception of tier 8 to the point where I called it good, all right, even though it's clearly amazing. It was, although I was a good raid. Trial of the Tr Grand Crusader, though, turbo fun. <laughs> but then, Mike, ICC arrives. And we got our asses chewed up. Ooh, really? Uh, a guild that's farming Ulduar hard modes, farming Trial of the Grand Crusader. Which bosses are fucking you up? In ICC. It's going to be the surgeon. Yeah, putricide. Blood queen can be a pain in the ass, but it shouldn't be. No, blood queen should be all right. You know which fight I always hated? Council. Even though it's not that hard. Somebody dropping that fucking ball. Some fucking hunter who can't stand under a fucking ball. Prick. What a prick. You'd be like fucking four minutes into the fight and that dipshit forgets to stand under his fucking ball. Oh, God. Yeah, that fight is so annoying. Like, at least Blood Queen you can blast. And then there's the usual, Arthas. Uh, I always thought Syndragosa was fucking boring. I hated Syndragosa. Oh, that fight was shit. Absolute dog shit. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> you might be wondering which bosses we struggled on. <laughs> well, of course we struggled some on Professor... Some on Syndragosa, but the, for the love of fucking God, Arthas. Arthas just kept handing our asses to us. Mike, we were progressing the Lich King for seven weeks. It's not that, Mike, you might, it's not that bad, seven weeks. I, it can't just be Defile. It could be the pallies not being able to do the spirits. Maybe something like that. It can't just be defiled. There's no way you don't accidentally get good defiles after seven weeks. Like At that point, you'll randomly get it correct. At the same time, even when we were week 30 into killing him, our biggest nemesis always showed its ugly head. We had... Can anybody guess what mechanic it is? And we're talking way post farm. And I don't even know how this is possible. Which mechanic on the Lich King? Shadow Trap. How the fuck are you dying to Shadow Traps? Just move the boss. 
<laughs> How is that even possible? Just move the fucking boss. Like, the boss is not near the shadow trap anymore. I don't get it. Fucking shadow traps. <clears throat> shadow traps in phase one. One of our tanks could not hold aggro for the life of him. And I kid you not, Mike, when he got shadow trapped in P1, he wouldn't move from it because, and he, and I quote, his weak aura didn't make a sound. Don't ask me how you cannot fucking see the black circle forming under your character is beyond me, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't even play with sound. <laughs> Fucking just open your eyes and have a look. And now that I've given you a brief introduction, let me give you the situation we're in and why I have come to Drama Time for help. Kata is too hard. What? Okay. Kata is too hard. Our guild has about six to seven amazing players. Okay, you got to give us a description, but the advice is still the same. Change guild. If your guild can't kill it, go somewhere else. As long as it's not you causing the problems, go somewhere else, right? <clears throat> That's always the advice. Our guild has about six to seven amazing top tier passing legendary players. Ten to eleven really good players. And the rest, I'm pretty sure, are cleaning their mice while we're doing boss pulls. They are absolute dog tier. We still, to this day, are unable to do Halfus without missing interrupts. In 25, man? In 25, man? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. It used to be in 10, man, that only a mage could do it. I would accept that, but I'm pretty sure they did not release the original version of the Cataclysm Raids this time around. They released the fixed versions. But in 10, man, that was a legitimate problem. Only mages could do it. And you could only bring one mage. It was rough. But in 25, man... <laughs> Mike, we have three elemental shamans and four mages assigned to it. <laughs> <laughs> that's brutal <laughs> that's fucking brutal holy shit to be fair today we did 30 man raiding and i saw 29 men stood on top of a worm and nobody interrupted it just saying i saw that today i saw 29 dudes stood on a worm and it's still casted and it's a slow ass cast as well it was a slow fucking cast the worms got its that thing on i saw that today we still, to this day, are wiping to healers not dispelling on Sinestra. Oh, Rack. It's the only healer mechanic on Sinestra. And it's usually handled... Isn't Rack healers? One person does Rack, right? And you have somebody help at the very end of the, the time. But it's a one-man job, right? Rack. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a one-man job. It's just like your best healer. You're the rack guy. You deal with rack. Okay. <clears throat> it's a dot that increases its damage. It does. But when you dispel it, it splits onto two people. So you go one, two, four, eight, etc. Uh, like that. <sighs> Mike, I'm not going to lie. I understand that the proper thing to do is to leave. And I know you'll say that. I did. <laughs> and try for a better guild. But there's only a handful of guilds worth applying to, and I don't think I'll be accepted. Why? I mean, top guilds are always looking for good players. Hmm. There's, I've never been in a top guild that was like, and we're done recruiting. That's never happened. <laughs> that has never happened. That's never happened. If some fucking rock star rocks up to the door, you're not like, nah. No. That, and also... Oh, they would have to accept the four or five of us that are friends. Mm. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. Ain't no way. Ain't no how. 
And you know why? Because exactly what you're doing right now. When one of you decides to leave, you all leave. And that leaves a gaping giant hole bigger than... Never mind. Uh, in the guild. No. <clears throat> That's not happening. If joining your own... Uh, if, which, if joining your own guild is incredibly hard, joining as a group is basically impossible. And rightfully so. So I turn towards you, Mike, and the jury. What do I do? I understand my guild has people that are dads and just want to log on, press Holy Radiance, and clear Heroic... Uh, 5 out of 13 heroic, but I don't fucking want to do that. I want to get better. I want to pass. I want to kill 13 out of 13 in one night instead of having to wipe because of the fact that one of our healers forgot that it was his turn to press barrier. <laughs> I leave it to you. Um, okay. The, the, the honest answer is you go solo, you apply to a good guild. That's what you do. You're not joining as a group. A good guild does not want a group of people joining. Because you're all going to leave at some point. It only takes one of you to get your fucking ass in a twist, and then there's a big hole in the guild. The other alternative, uh, if you want something a little friendlier, and to stay with your friends, you can try speaking to the guild master and saying, look, this has to change. We need to get, we need to get rid of these players. It's a problem. Or we're going to play retail because retail's way better right now than Cata Classic. That's your only two choices. Although you have got the third choice, shut the fuck up and deal with it. That's your only third choice. The main choice is apply on your own. Have your friends apply on their own and see if they do well. If they're all good players, you can try that. Uh, we've done that in the past. You can't apply as a group, but if you say, like we did, me and Cloggy of Nups have done it a few times. Uh, it's like, we're probably going to try and get into X Guild. I can't remember what they're called. We tried it a few times, and Shade did it as well. We all applied individually, because the guild was breaking up. And we all got accepted. <clears throat> because we all had really good logs, and were good players, or whatever. And it worked out fine. Um, you could try that. But generally speaking, you still have to roll the dice and go solo. Other than that, speak to the GM. Or shut the fuck up and deal with it. Uh, that's just to say there's joins a group though. Seems a little scummy for the guild. N it, only if you won't move if one of your friends doesn't get in. Which you can do. <clears throat> that's totally fine too. Um, but it is the best way is doing it individually. Yeah. Uh, you're not cheating yourself. No, like when the last time we did it, because our guild was falling apart. So this would be Legion. Yeah, when our guild fell apart in Legion... We all looked for a guild to go to that was still at the world top standard. We found one. We were like, we think we're going to apply here. We sent our apps. Then uh, Bald, Fat and Ugly started. Some of our players decided to go to that guild and not move to Bald, Fat and Ugly. The rest of us went a different way. It's about being a grown-up about it. You could, It's fucking World of Warcraft. You can play with literally the other faction. It's fine. It's fine. You might not be able to raid all together. Yeah, it sucks, but you can do M plus together all day, every day. You can do everything else you want to do. You can literally play with the other faction. It's totally fine. It's fine. And let's face facts. Most of your friends are all at different skill levels. And as you move up, there's nothing worse. I'll tell you what. Let me tell you a little story. <clears throat> In the Burning Crusade, I wanted to join a guild called Celebrity, but they were filled with bastards. Uh, and they didn't accept my application until after they had killed Illidan, to which I lost interest and turned them down. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, and so I, uh, I applied to a guild called Kill Count Lost. Uh, hang on a minute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, Hellnolf. <laughs> uh, so I applied to Kill Count Lost. Um, I got in there. Good times. And then they, uh, a lot of my friends were asking, what's that guild like? Because, you know, the rest of us are all looking to join. So a lot of them applied. And I would say wholeheartedly, I vouched for them because I genuinely believe they were really good. They were really good in a worse guild. This is just a fact, right? This is just a fact. They were really, really good compared to the other guild <laughs> but in my mind they were really good players i as the old ray leader in kill count lost and tank and whatever i would rely on those guys to do mechanics and so when the leader of kill count lost came to me and was like hey these guys have applied they used to be in your guild what do you think of them 
And I was like, they're really good. Like, these are really good players. These are the people I would give mechanics to, assign jobs to, things like that. And they got accepted under my vouch. <clears throat> so I had my group of friends back. They were my friends. Every single one of them failed their trial. And before it happened, the guild master uh, asked me in and said, we're going to kick all your friends. We don't want to lose you. But these guys suck. And what made it worse is I knew it was coming because when they did their trial raid, they were nowhere near the people I was playing with at this point. Like, it was embarrassing. It fucking sucked. It really sucked. I watched them just, like, fail so hard compared to the players I was playing with now. And it was really... It felt really bad because I loved these guys. I thought they were great. Um, and their personalities were phenomenal. But it just turned out they just weren't that good. Um... And when you move up, even in World of Warcraft, you don't realize kind of how crap you are until you play with people that demolish you. <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, oh shit. So you've got to be careful with uh, sticking with a group of friends. If you, if you hunger for progress is what I mean. If you're not hungry about progress, it don't fucking matter. Play with your friends. It doesn't matter. We didn't kill Queen, whatever the fuck she's called today. No big deal. It's fine. No one's asked. We had a fun raid. We enjoyed it. Could we have like chosen the top 10 best dps or whatever and like probably killed it yes but like that's not fun that's not what we're about we were there to enjoy ourselves it's not why we wiped it was down to strategy and changes and i had to change some strategies and things like that and next week we'll get the kill and it'll be awesome totally fine it's all about what you want but if you're hungry for progress and you want to move up the ladder maybe even sit with echo sit alongside liquid you're probably gonna have to nups did it Nups abandoned me in uh, vanilla. He joined, what the fuck were they called? Harlequins or some shit. This motherfucker left me lead, raid leading newbies in Anixia. <laughs> While he was off doing Naxxramas. Yeah, Nups joined fucking Harlequins. Yeah, Nups was whispering me like, uh, do you need some water? You'll have to come to Nax to get it. You loved it? I mean, yeah. I truly believed it. I, I mean, that's probably a closer story. And it's. I think it's drama story one drama time episode one probably is i truly believed in a guild of shitters <laughs> i believed i could turn them into masters and they didn't want it and they weren't capable of it either <laughs> not only could they not have done it they didn't want it they were totally happy to farm molten core till the end of time <laughs> till the end of time they were happy doing molten core they were happy doing anixia and that was it they wanted nothing else, and I was dragging them, kicking and screaming through Blackwing Lair and all sorts of stuff, and they didn't want it. And they're still farming it to this day, probably. I bet a lot of them came back for Classic, because it was the best time. Either way, I'm going to Germany. So is Chris. Chris, come and say goodbye. Because Chris won't be working for Preach Gaming for the next couple of weeks. Mr. Chris is joining the Echo Production team. Yes. The memory is happening. I imagine I'll be about. I'll probably come say hello. I would hope so. In my yeah. little closet. They put me in a closet. So I will be streaming from a closet on Monday. Uh, Mr. Chris will be working on the production. So you might see him on the production camera and things like that. Yes, I shall be in the now there, no doubt. Yep, you're going to be making all sorts of things for Echo. Uh, and I will be live from Monday. There will be some changes because obviously we're at the race. But uh, also behind the scenes at the race, I'll be doing my daily uploads for the TDP. Our wonderful Vex will be dealing with those. So behind the scenes, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that will all be happening on the TDP YouTube channel. So check that out. We fly out Sunday afternoon, so we should be live as normal from Monday, uh, barring any like backstage filming I've got to do before I join the announced team proper. Other than that, over the weekend, I won't be doing anything, so I'm going to see my family and then I'm flying on Sunday. Um, so I'll miss you kind of till Monday. But other than that, tune into the Echo stream and uh, maybe Sunday afternoon I will appear there. Uh, I'm no doubt going to jump on the camera when I get there and just say hi, depending on who's casting. Um, and the mythic race starts on wednesday it's going to be a good one there's some brutal ass bosses in there it's going to be a brutal race and i hope you guys tune in for it other than that love you guys and uh i'll see you monday i feel like i'm going away forever it's literally no different than a normal end of friday and the stream will start on monday it'll just be a different background but um <laughs> so yeah <laughs> i'll see you at the usual time on monday morning <laughs> bye guys oh also incest monday morning <laughs>